Welcome to the bold analysis, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I want us to briefly look at this Adani deal and allow me just to take take you through it briefly, because I am going uh, because I am going to have an issue. We are really taking an issue with the way it is being handled. When Parliament, the PAC, um, uh, convened a meeting with Ministry officials, Treasury officials, Adani wants to take over the operation of JKA for the next 30 years. Now, apparently we know very well that the national carry had not been doing well. The Kenya Airways had been making losses. And these losses, I think for quite subsequent financial years, except this one here, this one they reported some profit for the first time, probably in the last five years. And it has been riddled with issues of management, government going to bail it out, despite the fact that government is the largest shareholder there. Now, is one of the shareholders there. So, uh, for me, I'm, I, I'm so skeptical with something that government is involved in. So, when I heard of Adani now holdings coming to take over, despite of so many other questions and, 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 and pertinent issues being raised, one of the things that was a takeaway for this project was the fact that at least for the first time, we do not have a problem where we are going to make losses and we are going to use our money to bail the national airline. So that was an advantage. Number two, I've always thought that, I've always felt that because the government is the largest shareholder there, is a shareholder there, they, they would even, you know, they would even massage misrepresent the financial statements so that they, they create a demand or rather a need for the national government to pump in some money. And through that conduit, people would still get some money in their pockets. I've always look, looked at it that way. I've always not taken it really through that. It, it really doesn't make profit. And so, Adani Holding, when it came through, of course, there were so many pertinent questions about procurement and uh, how the deal is. And the government tries to, to say that they're the ones that are asking for it. They're the ones that made the proposal. But even at this takeover, the MPs are asking, the national government wants to take over, the, there is a debt there of around 800, uh, around over 800 billion. Is it billion here? Yeah, 800 billion. And now they want the national government to take over that debt so then they want to operate. But even, even them after being given the mandate to operate that airline for 30 years, but Ile Deni Kohapa, Kenyan government used taxpayers' money to pay. And MP said no. If you are buying my shop, and in this shop, I am the person who is operating it. I had debts, but I've been operating it. But I've been paying rent, but I delayed paying rent for some three months. But you are, um, you are taking over my shop. Then you must just take over my debts. And MPs are questioning why the Treasury, and Badi has been brought in a fix. Why Badi and the Treasury uh, cartel, they know that Kenya is already struggling with the debt problem. But they want still the national government, through the Treasury, to take over those loans so that they will use taxpayers' money to offset the debt. And MPs have said no. So that was last week. Now today there was drama in JKA because despite of push and pull while government is still trying to engage in some sort of public participation and MPs are already raising red flags and are saying this, uh, this, bill, uh, uh, this deal needs to be stopped, there is something else that has emerged. They were seen in the airport taking photos of the airline and it caused taking the photos of that place and it really caused panic. In fact, uh, people didn't really, I don't, know whether it, I don't know why it's being done in such a casual manner until even some passengers were stranded on that. And so, everything might be good with the Dani in terms of them taking over management of the airline of Kenya Airways, of JKA. But I want you to look at some conditions that they are putting. There are ones I don't agree with. <laughs> uh, yes, they can take over operation for the next 30 years. Within this next 30 years, number one, no other airport will be upgraded in Kenya so that only JKIA will have investment. In fact, government cannot get into a deal 
with another investor to make JKIA, to make the, 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 the airport in Kisumu or the one in Mombasa. In fact, I was reading Standard, someone was saying that at some point they even demanded that between Mombasa and Nairobi, one of the airports be shut. So that JKA becomes the busiest and the one that can only be used. And probably the one to uh, generate traffic. Now, to that, to that extent, I think I agree with what sometimes Musalem Davadi said when they were talking about airport deal. And I remember when they were complaining about the port, not even JKA, the port of Mombasa. They said that some of those structures are strategic security infrastructures. Number three, there is also local mobility from Kilifi to Kisumu to Malindi, uh, from Malindi, Kili, uh, Malindi Kisumu, uh, Ma Nairobi, Mombasa. It's very tedious by that even to move by bus. It's very tedious. So for those who can afford, at times you will even try to use the airport, so to, to use the plane. So the internal mobility is also another problem that they're not taking advantage of. Number two, the airports are also creating employment opportunities even for us. Yes, it's also an employment opportunity. It is what is also giving those cities aesthetics and value. How can Eldoret, how can Kisumu be a city without an airport? How can Mombasa be a city without an airport? How can Eldoret be a city without an airport? So the airport is part of a critical infrastructure even to elevate the municipalities to a city. They are saying JKA so any other person should get involved in upgrading another airport apart from that. And in fact, they want to manage JKA and all the other subsidiaries. Now, when you don't, when you want to have monopoly, I don't think that is the best thing. In US, in Britain, in other countries, I don't think airports are run as monopolies. Uh, it is not going to be something that really people take. Number two is this issue of employing staff. They will have exclusive rights on who to be employed. And to that end, that is why the airport's workers have been complaining that we are likely to lose our jobs if these people don't take care of us and if we just look at this deal getting its way. So that's also another issue. Where do they, where don't they want, where is their way? Of course, when they take it over, it goes without say, malumeka peseyako nwende utaika mtutafanya kazi. To that end, Kenyans might really miss out, and that is how that takeover. Uh, quite a number of us, will, a number of Kenyans will lose their jobs. Um, the profit, the takeover after 30 years is a bit too long, and there's so many other dynamics. In fact, some economists were saying, what is, what is 30 years, that airport, we were in 2024, and the last time it was refurbished was 30 years ago. So by the time it will be taken over, it will be given back to the government, there will be a regime change. And probably they're just riding on that. So Kenya must also get suited to short-term deals. And what exactly are they going to do? Because if you look at the funding model, they want to fund locally. So people are asking, if they want to fund from local banks here, then why are we giving them? Why don't we give... Why don't we just use the same money, get a modality, a, a model of, of these financial institutions then locally supporting and the capacity building that is supposed to be done, or even the expansion that is supposed to be done, is done by the government. Why would you give someone to come and make profit while well, we are making all the money but stealing all that? So ladies and gentlemen, that is my take. Thank you. Let's meet in the next. And I want to leave you with the report about Kilifi Mission. Asante. American scholar Martin Luther King Jr. said, This country will not be a good place for any of us to live in unless we make it a good place for all of us to live in. Between 24th and 30th August, Bond Charity Network pitched tent in Magarini constituency, Gungoni, a semi-arid village in north of Kilifi. This is the north part of the coast. Combing through the villages coordinated by the village coordinators, we were able to pick 15 elderly men and, and women beyond 80 years living in deplorable conditions. Our intervention after assessing the need was based on reconstructing the makeshift shelters, issuing mattresses and food donations. Here. 
I met a 75 year old Changawa Mwembego, a widowed granny, and she painted a picture of the house. Ukiangalia pale juu, um unaweza ona ni kama unaweza ndani ni kama mtu haishi. So this is how it looks like. Number one, this one doesn't even have the door. This is my entrance. He ni vile unaingia. When you get this is the space you get into, then this is where she is. Now, this is inside the way yako hapa and she'll be telling you now this one is very very challenging. Look at the roof. So, ukiwa ndani, what I was showing from outside, this is it. Benson, ha? Hebu kuja. Uh, mama ulisema im, mama ulisema unalala wapi? Unalala hapa. Unalala hapa chini. Hapa chini. Sasa hii mabati ni mabati iliyekwa kwa sababu kama kuna nyesha ndio asinyeshea. Hii mabati iliyekwa. Ah uh, hii mabati iliyekwa kama amelala hapa chini mvua inanyesha asinyeshewe. Mm. Na sasa kup, na kupika na pika hapa. Mm. Mama hapa hapa chini hapa. Unalala hapa? Unalala hapa hote. Mm. Mm. Hamna malazi hamna kitanda hamna chochote. Si na chochote. Now guys, this this one is one that really blew my mind. This is one of the four houses we are going to build. So, this will have to bring down and put up a new brand new structure. Mwambigu's house is amongst the four new houses we are building afresh in Kilifi. After assessing this region, we realized that one of the need that the elderly or rather the grannies need in this space is a decent house. Mze Kavumbi Luganje is patiently waiting for us on the door. Seated next to him is the wife and the grandchildren are all milling around him. The 91 year old Kavumbi, we are told lost his sight after a short illness in 2023 something that changed his life completely even though he cannot recognize the visitors in the compound but he can listen and hear what we are saying here we get to understand the real situation as we try to unravel the demand and the need <laughs> Mm. Mzee. Mm. Sasa sisi tunasema asante sana kwa kutukaribisha. Kutu, kutu, kutu uh. mm, na wewe sasa pia upate kula na pia uweze kulala. Unipatia godoro. Godoro. Ewe mm. Mulungu wangu na kuboya maisha yako yako. Na sina na tabu nini na na napata a a in Kavumbi's need, we were able to erect the door, put the door in the house, repaired the broken walls, and through your support, we purchased him Godoro, that is a Swahili word for mattress, food stuff for the household. And he's amongst the 15 grannies, uh, the elderly members of this community that benefited from this program. This Anga Marombe is lonely home. The sickling wife had been taken to Malindi District Hospital previous day the day we had before we had visited however we understand that treatment was snailing because of finances and even though we've come through to help build the house buy him the mattress and be able to give him food stuff there is more pressing issue the wife is still in the hospital there is no clear idea on how she's going to be bailed out because of the ballooning cost of that treatment sasa mimi nashukrani kwa sababu hivi ninashukuru Mungu ambariki nipe mkuja hapa wageni wangu tujaliwe kwa usalama 
Asanta sana. Pia huko kwa mabariki. Hao nao wabarikiwe. Na huko ni barikiwe. Asanta sana. Mama bado yuko huko. Eh yuko huko. Mm. Mambo siku kidogo tu alisema daktari wa tarudi. Mm. Tarudi nyumbani. Huwa na ndo hospitali ama ndo mara ya kwanza amepelekwa. Ah mara ya kwanza. Mara ya kwanza. Mm. But apart from that, this village is not connected to the Kenya power grid. And so, they depend on such traditional means of lighting the house. And here, the Sangha seem to have a demand. Papa. Oh, no. 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 Lena mangaza sana. Sasa hata hii ukiweka mwangaza mzo wangu, hii mwangaza na na. Sasa hiyo ndio una unaona nayo usiku. Hiyo ndio una usiku hii sasa. Lakini imekwisha haina moto sana. Nataka mawe. Mawe mawili kwa 40. So guys, what what Mzee is saying, whatever Mzee is holding here I know most of you have so know this. So these are batteries. So he's connecting with some this small bulb here. So he's saying this is what he uses at night just to illuminate the house. And um, now in this place Hakuna steamer. Now what is available here is solar power. And um, um, I've asked around solar here there is one that is paid um, 1,000, then you pay 30 shillings per day. 1,400, then you pay 30 shillings per day. That Mzee, I know, cannot afford that 30 shillings per day. So, but if we pay 17,500, Mzee will get a solar that will use throughout without paying daily stipend. So, uh, of all the houses we visited, he pointed this to me. He came out with this and was, was saying, we can do something. So I think... Mwenda Zagon. She looks very old, but delighted of what we had done. Her house is amongst the four new houses we are building afresh. And on Sideka Karisa Kulo, looking very old, but there is something interesting, or rather not interesting, but shocking about the condition of the house. <laughs> Nyumba hiyo haina mlango si nyumba kwa kaida. Na unapotoka nyumba ni full. Since you so south. Haina mlango. Kingi hapi unaingia huko tu. Eh? Usiku hamna watu wanazaingia. Ah, au kwetu si si rais ya hiyo. Lakini kwa hakika nyumba ni haina mlango. Nyumba lazima iwe na mlango. Kabisa hilo ni lazima. Kama hapo ukiingia unaingia hivyo unalala unatoka. Lakini hapo ukilala Vilo melala basi mtu wake ingia. Masa kuingia paka ndani, na weo melala, uchakua melala, weo ujui. Si ukilala ujui. Ukilala ujui. Hii ni nini mzema? Hii. Kitu kingine cha kushikapanya. Cha kushikapanya. Na hii ukishikapanya, unapela kama? Panya watu na uwa, tunatupa kwa sabu wana haribu mahini. Sasa inashikapanya watu. Karisa was blessed with five sons. All of them are married, but very jobless, also living in this condition. In fact, he says some are even more worse. Now, he says he cannot blame the sons for neglecting him because even the children did not go past secondary school because of lack of school fees. And so they cannot secure well-paying jobs in towns, but have to still depend on that subsistence agriculture in the small piece of land that was also being shared by the five children belonging to him. I call her the gold of the mission, Kadzo Masha Maguta. Kadzo will ask for her ID and we've realized she was born in 1931. So if you make your calculation, Kadzo in 1932, rather. And so if you make your calculation, you'll understand that Kanzo 
is in her 92, even though they say they're not so sure about the age. Something interesting. Despite of the challenge, she looks weak, but not sick. She's very clean, with very clear memory, and still very good speech. I want us to listen to Kadzo. Mm. As we leave Kilifi Mission, we had achieved four houses are being built, now construction starting afresh. Four were repaired and the repair was doing the walls and also erecting a door because the doors had also been raised as a challenge. Twelve of um, grannies or rather twelve beneficiaries were able to get the mattresses and 15, all the 15, we gave them the food staff. Now having a look at the situation in Kilife, um, the elderly mission, the granny care program that is targeting the elderly beyond 85 years comes at a good intervention to help them at least get a living. As we leave Kilifi, we say, even if you cannot help all, but you can change one life at a time. Thank you.